It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne. We'll guide you to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. It's time to pump you up. This is the No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. Welcome to No Pain, No Gain Financial Podcast. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management, along with our chief investment officer, the man with the plan, and who happens to be my father, Bob Payne. So, Bob, I know it's been a long time since uh, you've done a multiple choice quiz, but I thought it would be apt that we did a uh, multiple choice quiz. So, you ready? Bring it on. Bring it on. All right. So, which of these is the best estimate of how much income you'll need in retirement? A, 50% of your income. B, 85% of your income. C, 100% of your current income. Or D, none of the above. You know, Ryan, the rule of thumb in the financial planning industry has always been you're going to retire on 70 to 80% of your after-tax income. But with working with so many... Yep, with working with so many people over the last 40 years, the answer is D, none of the above. None of the above. So higher than 100%. It's always higher than 100%. It's a, and recently, I just read an article that that's what everybody's finding out, is that uh, they all estimate lower than what they're actually going to need in retirement. That's why you got to run those what-if scenarios, right? Yeah, no, it goes back to what we had talked about in the last segment. The problem is you're living a lot longer than your parents so you're going to end up having a lot more cost in retirement. I mean, it's, it's going to be everything from fun things to do. It's hard to believe, but if you're going to be in your 80s, you'll probably be, still be going on great trips. I mean, we're seeing that now with our clients. They're not slowing down. In addition to that, though, there's going to be those healthcare costs that you didn't have to worry about when you were younger. So I agree with you 100%, Bob. You really need to prepare for more money in retirement, and that has to be part of running your, your wealth projections or factor it in. Uh, so that's next of course right. If they don't have you as a son, then they need to make sure that they don't run out of money. <laughs> I sound like I'm going to become Bob's pension soon. <laughs> I'm kind of liking this idea. I'm loving the show. This is a good, uh, good theme for the show. <laughs> I'm not really enjoying this. Uh, so <laughs> next question, which of these do you find that retirees fear the most? A, not leaving enough to the kids, B, okay. running out of money, and C, needing nursing home care. Number one thing you fear is running out of money. Absolutely. You know, over the years, I've had different ways of that being expressed. Um, but back in the 80s and 90s, when I had someone who wasn't saving enough, you know, I would illustrate it with our wealth projection. But, you know, I would tell them that they said, well, what happens if we run out of money? Well, I'd be a bag lady. And, you know, I said, well, yeah, that, that could happen. So, you know, for years, a lot of my clients would come in and say, here, here's another check. Put it in the pension. Put it in a retirement plan. I don't want to be a bag lady. So running out of money is a very motivating, fearful image. We don't want anybody to run out of money, right? Yeah, no, exactly right. And that's why, I mean, I always say planning is very therapeutic. It's just nice to know where you stand. And a lot of times you're probably better off than you think. It's just sitting down and modeling these things out. And that's why I love doing our total financial master plan because it just gives you a great view of where you are and where you need to be and if any adjustments need to be made, which is better than being in the dark. Next question, Bob, is which of these examples best represents a diversified retirement plan? A, a mix of 60% stocks and 40% bonds. B, three rental homes in different neighborhoods along with significant amount of cash in the bank. Or C, 10 to 12 different mutual funds. Or D, none of the above. Well, it depends on that mix of stocks and bonds, and it depends on what type of mutual funds they are. But you know, just as a rule of thumb, right, I'd say none of the above. Yeah, no, I agree with you. I agree with you. None of these strategies address what you're going to need in retirement. The key is you do want to have some diversification, but you know what that mix is between different stocks, bonds, real estate really has to be customized to you. Yeah, I mean every every plan has to be customized to you because you're unique. It's it's always about you, and you shouldn't have this cookie cutter portfolio that a lot of of these wirehouses recommend. You want to have a strategy that's based on your goals, and it's got to be part of a plan, right, right? It's got to be part of a, a living plan that adjusts as time passes, all right? Every day we get older. Every day the markets operate, and that's where people lose money when they have a portfolio that gets more risky as they get older and nobody's paying attention. Yes, you've got to readjust along the way. It's a working document. It's not something static. And the other thing too, Bob, is right now things are good. Markets done really, really well for the last decade. 
the best time to make changes is when things are good because it, when the when the wind changes and things turn on a dime, you're out of luck. It's not the time to make changes. Um, the number thing one thing I'm finding, right, is that most of you don't realize the risk that's inherent in your portfolio. Risks are only recognized in hindsight. And you, big risk I see are with bond funds, which we talk about all the time. But if rates go up, those bond funds are going to get clobbered and you can do something about it right now. And that's that's really the call to arms. That's a call to action that I, that I'd like to announce right now. Yeah. And that's why I love our total financial master plan, Bob, because we can actually build that portal where we can see everything so we can actually see where the risks are and we can actually model out where you have problems in your portfolio. The things we talked about on today's show should illustrate for you just how important it is to have a clear financial plan. Our job is to make your plan robust and to help you navigate through the sometimes hard to understand financial landscape. That's why we created the Total Financial Master Plan for our podcast listeners. We know it would be helpful to you, so we're offering you an absolutely free consultation as a thank you for listening to the show. Here's what the Total Financial Master Plan entails. Now, it's a full holistic review where we look at everything. Gather all your statements, put them in a folder, put them in a shopping bag, pick up the phone, text us. We're going to review everything with you and build your own personalized 360 financial portal that allows you to become financially organized and to view your complete financial life in real time at your convenience. We're going to break down your portfolio to see if you have the three key elements of a successful strategy, true diversification, fees, and income. You know, you want to be diversified. That doesn't mean just owning a couple of mutual funds like we said in the last segment. It's about diversifying your assets within asset classes and across asset classes and having permanence and definition in your bond portfolio. Fees are something that, you know, I don't know about you, but I hate being overcharged by anybody. I certainly don't want to be overcharged by my own portfolio. And lastly, income. We want to help you to increase the income that your portfolio delivers on a reliable annual basis. And lastly, we're going to tie it all together into one customized view, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or is your money going to outlive you utilizing strategies that my family's been perfecting for over 40 years? That's right, folks. For four decades, we've been helping families like yours get from your financial point A to your point B, to your goals, to your dreams with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the Total Financial Master Plan that we're offering to you. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own Total Financial Master Plan or visit us on the web at bbullish.com. That's bbullish.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text at 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or click the Get Started button on bbullish.com. Planning for retirement shouldn't feel like rocket science, but it's easy to get lost in the financial jargon. Every seventh conductor being connected by a non-reversible tremi pipe to the differential girdle spring on the up end of the gram meters. Let's clear up the confusion. Back to Ryan and Bob. Let's talk about retirement planning isn't what it used to be. And we talk a lot about this, Bob. You know, you and I, we've been doing this a lot a long time now. You started back 40 years ago helping people with retirement planning. I've been doing it for almost 20 years. And let's face it, the kind of planning we do today for people is a lot different than what we did many, many years ago. You know, it's different, not radically different, but uh, the big thing is when I started some 40 odd years ago, you know, most of you stayed with the same company and you had a pension. You never really thought about retirement. You know, once you hit 62 or 65, you would collect your pension, you would collect your Social Security. It was all done for you. It's all different now. You know, not a lot of people have pensions, right? Yeah, you're right. That's a great point. And we don't see many pensions like we used to see it. But I think, Bob, you do have a pension. Yeah, I do, right? Matter of fact, I just got my second check. I'm uh, very excited. Wait a minute, Bob. So now you're getting these pension checks. Does that mean that we can reduce your salary here at Payne Capital Management? Look, Ry, you already work me like a dog and pay me like a puppy. Um, <laughs> I'm actually looking around for a new agent to renegotiate my deal here as uh, chief investment strategist. <laughs> Always looking for more, Bob. Never looking for less. 
<laughs> what, what kind of advice do you want? Do you want to know how to make more or make less? I mean, you know, choose. <laughs> the point is you don't have the pension like it used to. You know, there's a lot of uncertainty about Social Security, I think, as you're a baby boomer. You don't have too much to worry about. But what about your generation, Rye? What happens with Social Security with, with the X generation and more importantly with the millennials? I, I don't even want to go there, Bob. I'm not even factoring it in. But even if you're getting Social Security now and probably not getting a pension, let's face it. I mean, that's not going to be enough to get through retirement. And I think more to the point, Bob, is the onus is now on you. You've got to take your portfolio and you've got to convert it into what I would call a pension-like portfolio that generates income that you can live off of in retirement. And I would argue probably your portfolio is not structured right for retirement. Boy, that's a great point. You really do have to build a portfolio like a pension manager would. And that doesn't mean just putting it into something for yield. It really is about investing for total return. You need a balance between risk assets like stocks and bonds, and it can't be all or none. And that's what pensions do. They hedge against inflation. And that's the big hidden insidious tax that is the biggest risk to you, whether you're retired right now or whether you're planning to retire. That also speaks to, Bob, the other issue you have is we're all living longer, which means not only do we have to worry about inflation for a longer period of time, but that means health care costs. There's a lot of things you need to price into your retirement plan, which you probably haven't done. And it's so critical because the good news is you are living longer. Bad news is the odds are you're going to have more medical costs. You're going to have more things that you're going to have to pay for that uh, your parents didn't have to worry about when they retired. Well, that's why I had three children, right? I plan to live a long time and um, I've already found a way to transfer money directly from your account into my checking account. And, you know, so thank you for that. But uh, hey, let's face <laughs> it, you, you don't want to become a burden on your children. So it's so critical that you have a program that takes into account that you may live to 90 or 95 or 100. Now, some of our clients say, right, they don't want to live that long. But what if you do? Right, you have to you have to run those what if scenarios, don't you, Ry? Yeah, no, you definitely do. And the reality is, you probably are going to live longer, and you're going to want to live longer because you know what we find is, we, even with our clients, is we have a lot of clients in their 80s that are doing things that they never dreamed they'd be doing in their 80s. And you got to plan for it. You got to plan to fund it. Um, another thing too, just going back to income, Bob, and talking about yield. Another mm -hmm. solution that just doesn't work right now is interest rates are very low and having too much cash on the sidelines. You're not going to get to your goals sitting with so much cash. And unlike your parents, when interest rates were a lot higher, you've got to be a lot smarter about getting a return on your money. Uh, whereas before, you could probably just sit in some CDs, collect your interest every month, and you're in good shape. That doesn't work now because rates are so, so low. Yeah, that's the real shame, Rye. Over the last eight years, so many of our clients' parents and aunts and uncles who used to invest in three month and six month and two year certificates of deposit and roll them over and did it successfully for 20, 30 years, suddenly are making less than an inflation rate of return. And all they needed was some advice on investing a little longer term. They would have had a great positive return. It's not too late. Rates are good now and, and there's good places to invest your money. But sitting in cash has been a failed strategy, not just now, but for the last 50 years. If you're enjoying this podcast, if you're getting the knowledge that we believe you're getting out of it, we want to offer you a free consultation to make sure you have the best financial plan possible. We call it our Total Financial Master Plan. It's our full holistic review where we analyze everything. All you need to do is print out or collect those financial statements this month, put them in a binder, put them in a folder, bring them in the office, and we'll go through all of it. What we'll do is we'll build you your own personalized online portal where you can see your entire financial net worth in one place, and we can do a full analysis. We're going to look at all the critical components. We're going to look at things like income. Income is so critical for retirement. Is your portfolio structured correctly for retirement? We're going to show you how to optimize or increase the income on your portfolio to fill in that income gap. We're going to look at fees. There's a lot of hidden costs in investment portfolios. I know it's shocking. Bob and I are going to break down all the hidden costs in those annuities, mutual funds, show you how to reduce costs on your portfolio. And we're going to look at diversification. Is your portfolio protected if the market goes down? Is your portfolio bulletproofed? We're going to show you how to protect your portfolio for the long term. Then we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we have literally worked on for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. That's the total financial master plan that we're offering to you. 
call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. And tell us you hear the podcast and you want your own total financial master plan. Or visit our website, thebullish.com or paincm.com and click the Get Started button to schedule a free conversation. Call or text 844-752-6692. That's 844-752-6692. Or simply click the Get Started button on thebullish.com. It's time for Financial Propaganda of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what did you find out there this week in the horrid world of financial propaganda? I found out that the sell-side indicator at Merrill Lynch is firmly neutral. Well... That tells me nothing, Bob. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I just wanted to pique your interest, son. So the sell side <laughs> indicator is a collection of the recommended stock allocation of all the Wall Street analysts uh, at the last business day of each month. So basically what it does, it talks to all the strategists to find out how much they think you should have in the stock market. And here's the best part about the indicator. When they're very, very bullish, in other words, when they tell you to have the most amount of stock in your portfolio, is typically an indication that the market's about to go down. Huh. So in other words, <laughs> this indicator is what we call a contrarian indicator in that the market does the opposite of what the so-called experts that you're paying a lot of money to tell you it's gonna happen. You know, for example, right, so over the last 10 years, when do you think these analysts had their highest recommended allocation to stocks? I mean, it had to be at the peak of the market. It always is. Yeah. Right before the market crashed, they had their highest allocation, and they had their lowest allocation back in 2012, and the market's gone up about 300% since then. Yeah, it's amazing. It's the great irony of investing, right? I mean, it's when we feel the best, we're the most optimistic, there's the most risk, and when it always feels like the world's falling apart, it's apocalypse now, the opportunity is always the greatest. And I think that's one of the, the hardest things about being an investor in general is whatever you feel emotionally is wrong. <laughs> and, and that's why an indicator like this is very interesting. And I have to think, Bob, you're saying it's neutral right now. It means that, mm -hmm. well, essentially people are very ambivalent about stocks. Even though the market's gone up magnificently here, nobody's really, really that bullish or they don't have the rosy colored sunglasses on. Well, here it is, Ry. You know, you're sitting there, you're worried about trade, you worry about global growth, you worry about emerging market currencies dropping, you're worried about geopolitics. Well, so do the experts. Just because you have a CFA or an MBA or you work for a big bank doesn't make you less human. And you are subject you know, to fear and greed, and so are the experts, and that's why you can't follow a strategy based on experts. You need a strategy yep. based on what you need to accomplish. That's what yeah, Warren Buffett does, that's what Ryan Payne does, that's what you should do. <laughs> Ryan Payne and Warren Buffett in the same sentence. Finally, at last. Two greatest um, investors of all time. <laughs> hey, that's right. That's right. I'm a legend in my own mind, though, Bob. But no, I, th I think that's a good point. I think it's a good point when you're building your own investment plan is we talked a lot about managing risk. It's mm -hmm. so critical now that uh, you do make sure that you're, you're putting the right precautions and safeguards in place because it's not going to last forever. So now we know, right, that the sell side indicator means buy and the buy side indicator means sell. So we got everybody completely confused. What did you find <laughs> out there in the world of uh, financial propaganda? <laughs> Let me write that down real quick. So I found an interesting one this week. Cryptocurrencies collapsed after a report from Goldman Sachs came out saying that they're rolling back their trading desk plans in cryptocurrencies. And this is just a great example, Bob, of remember the mania for Bitcoin. It's just a good reminder not to get caught up in the uh, you know euphoria of any certain market. And Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies is a great example of that. It always drives me crazy when people would buy something as risky and as untried and untrue as, as cryptocurrencies, and they're scared to death of a diversified portfolio of blue chip stocks and bonds. <laughs> it's so true. I mean, I had so many calls coming in 
in December into January, people that had no interest in the markets or anything saying, hey, we got to get into this Bitcoin. Everybody's talking about it. Let's put some money there. And to your point, Bob, I mean, what is more risky than a currency that doesn't really even work? <laughs> you hey, can't you buy mean, anything I, with it. You actually called the top in Bitcoin when you did that uh, video segment where they filmed you going to Starbucks and tried to buy a, a latte with Bitcoin. It was hilarious, but it was also the top of the market. <laughs> and guess what? I couldn't buy a uh, Starbucks coffee with that Bitcoin. <laughs> well, the best part was finally, since you held the line up for so long, you got so many New Yorkers mad at you, the manager came out and said, here, it's free. Get out of here. <laughs> That's right. He gave me a free coffee. He felt bad for me. <laughs> Well, if you can't buy a cup of coffee with currency, then you know that's not a very useful currency. <laughs> the point is, I think uh, what it comes down to, and right now, again, like like any time, you got to have a discipline with your portfolio. You've got to have a structure that gets you to retirement. If you're looking to learn a little more about some of the things we talked about on this podcast, but you're not quite ready for a one-on-one -on -one phone call, no problem. Check out our most recent guide that helps you learn the ins and outs of financial and retirement planning. It's free. And you can download it right now by texting the word bullish. That's bullish, B U L L I S H, to 555 888. That's texting the word bullish to 555 888. You can download our latest guide, Five Ways to Maximize Your Retirement Accounts. Just give you some ideas on how you can save on taxes through health savings accounts, 401ks, Roth 401ks, Roth conversions. We give you some simple, common sense ways to use retirement accounts to save on taxes. Simply text the word bullish to 555 888. That's the word bullish to 555 888. Or check out the show notes for the episode at bebullish.com for a link. Thanks for listening. We'll have another great show on tap next week. Don't forget to subscribe to the No Pain, No Gain financial podcast on Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify and everywhere else you can get podcasts. If you're looking to listen to past episodes or to access resources mentioned on this show, check out the full show notes of the program by clicking the link in the description of today's show or by visiting bebullish.com. For Bob Payne, I'm Ryan Payne, and as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.